Hey, and welcome back to Make It For Less. In today's episode, we're picking up where you left off at the Macrogachi from 10 months ago. And by picking up, I mean entirely changing almost every aspect of the entire thing to make it work much better and look a lot nicer. Still has clicky buttons though. A big part of the reason for the changes I made is that I kind of forgot I made a part one entirely. That is, until February of this year when an awesome artist called Petey contacted me to offer their services to draw a character for the Macro Gachi. We went back and forth for a bit before deciding on an adorable little griffin. I knew after seeing the art that PT had made that I would need to step up the quality for the rest of the project, so I went back to the drawing board. The first issue I wanted to tackle was the screen. While there was nothing wrong technically with the original screen I was using, mechanically there was a big issue. It takes nine connections to get it working. In addition to the screen connections, there were also connections for power, the buttons, and the piezo speaker. When it was all said and done, the wiring looked like it belonged on Eminem's sweater. Mom spaghetti. I got around this issue last time by cutting out an egg from some cardboard and hiding everything behind it, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do for the final product. Luckily, most of the problem was solved by the awesome ESP32 2432S028, also known as the CYD or cheap yellow display if you're not a robot. It puts the screen with all of its connections and an ESP32 microcontroller into one nicely organized package. This makes it much easier to design around and use in different projects, like the heart box I made with Mellow Labs earlier this year. With the screen and microcontroller taken care of in one fell swoop, and the buttons are the same as the last time, the only other hardware change is the power source. While leaving it plugged in all the time would work if the Macrogachi never left your desk, it gets a little tough if you want to take it anywhere, so a battery is definitely needed. I thought about looking into getting a LiPo battery and figuring out how to hook it up to a charging circuit and make sure it all worked without turning into an extra spicy explosive ravioli. But that's when I realized that for the price of the circuit board and the battery, I can get a fully self-contained 10,000 milliamp hour power bank that takes care of all of that for me. Since the CYD is already designed to run off of USB power, all I had to do was get a USB extension cable, cut it in half, and then connect the wire for power and ground directly to the power and ground inputs for the USB connector. If you are following along at home, make sure that you double check the power and ground connections before plugging in the battery. Shorting the data pins to power could result in damage to your CYD that makes it impossible to program. Ask me how I know. The last hardware element to talk about is the buttons. There's not much to say about them except that they are lots of fun to click. With the hardware sorted, the design was the next aspect I wanted to improve on. The original definitely had a, let's say, rustic charm, but my plan was always to have the finished product be nicely 3D printed. I wanted to make sure I got the egg shape just right, and I knew that I would really need to understand the egg to do it. So before I started modeling, I did some research. With that done and my notes in hand, I jumped into FreeCAD and started working. Thanks to my research, the basic design was easy to figure out, but not quite as easy was getting everything to fit nicely inside. I split the egg in two and hollowed it out to make space for everything. I started by figuring out how to get the display and the buttons mounted on the front half. The CYD has four mounting holes in the corners that I took advantage of. I modeled in four pins to match the holes, and after a few tweaks, I got them just right. Quick tip for fast prototyping. If you're using any Prusa Slicer derivative, you can cut down your design to just the parts that you were trying to test by creating a primitive, sizing it to roughly cover the part you need to test, and then using a Boolean intersection operation to keep just what you want. This helps me a lot when I'm trying to get sizing and spacing just right, so that I only need to print a small 15 minute test and not a much longer full print. And I can edit the actual thing I'm working on instead of having to create a fake test piece. With the screen sorted, I moved on to the buttons. Luckily, they are made to be super easy to use thanks to these little springy wings on the side. All you have to do is create a hole that is roughly the right size, and when you push the buttons through, they lock into place and self-center. The little integrated bevel sits flush against the surface and makes the whole thing look really clean and professional. The last thing to mount was the battery. I decided that this would be on the back half, and I created this little cradle that holds the bottom half of the battery, and the top sticks out just a little bit. I decided on this design so that the battery could be taken out to be charged or swapped easily. After modeling in a hole for the USB plug and printing a few test pieces to get it perfect, that finished the design process for the battery. The last thing I added was a small ridge on the backside that locks the front and back half together. And with that, the case for the project was done. I started 3D printing the case and moved on to the scariest part of the project, the code. 
I won't bore you with the details, but suffice to say the hole in the wall where I bashed my head grew just a little bit bigger. I'll have the code linked in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. But if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll show you how you can upload my program to your device without having to look at the code at all. With the coding done and all of the bugs squashed, hopefully, here's the final program. When you first start up the device, you'll be presented with an egg. You have to rapidly press the left and right buttons to make your egg hatch and out pops a griffin. It will walk around the screen and make different faces depending on their mood. You can check their stats by pressing the middle button. At the top, there are two options. The first is a game you can play with your griffin to increase their happiness. It's based on the look away game from Mario Party. The griffin will dance around as a timer counts down and then will look either left or right. You need to press the matching button in time. The game will continue forever until you hit the middle button to return to the main screen. The second option on the main screen is for food. On this screen, you will have the option to feed your pet either junk food or a healthy meal. Junk food will raise your pet's happiness and slightly improve their hunger, but bring down their health a little. A healthy meal will not affect happiness, but will improve substantially their hunger and will slightly increase their health. Balancing the foods you give your pet is essential to keeping them happy and healthy. As time goes on, your griffin will become hungry and sad if you don't pay attention to it. If you leave the device alone long enough, the screen will turn off to save power, but time will continue to pass in the game. The game also saves periodically, so even if you lose power, you won't lose progress with your griffin. If you want to reset at any time, you can do so by removing the battery and then putting it back in while holding the left and right buttons. Before final assembly, we need to upload the code to the device. You can either compile it yourself and upload it, or follow the link in the description to a website I set up to upload the code for you. You need to be using a Chrome-based browser, so Chrome, Edge, Opera GX, something like that, and should just need to click connect, find your device in the pop-up, and then click upload. If everything is successful, an egg will appear on your screen. With the code done and uploaded, and the 3D prints just finishing up, we can do our final assembly. With everything done, you can put in the battery and your Macrogotchi will come to life. And now, the only thing left to do is to have fun with it! I want to thank PD for their awesome work on all of the sprites used in this project. They did a ton of awesome work and I was super happy with how everything came out. Make sure to check out their stuff at the link below. They are also available for commission, for avatars and emotes. I'd also like to thank you, the viewer, for watching. If you like the video, a like goes a long way, and a subscribe will make sure you don't miss the next one. If you want to take your support to the next level, I have a Patreon with benefits like access to my Discord at any level, and a monthly sticker for those who pledge more. Speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank Kim, Pam, Christian, Joshua, Marcelino, and Ryan for their continued support. That's all I have this time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time here on Make It For Less.